Hi, my name is Nick Schmont. Um, I'm going to be talking today about my Insight project, predicting the consumer price index. Um, so let me go ahead and get started here. Okay, so um, how can we predict the consumer price index? Um, so you may not even know what the consumer price index is, so I will start there. Um, and it's the, the CPI, or the consumer price index, is a measure of how much each dollar you have will actually buy. Or in other words, it's a measure of inflation. Uh, so it's calculated based on a wide variety of components that are available to, for you to purchase, including your rent, your food, your transportation, um, all that kind of stuff. And it just measures on a month-to-month -month basis how much you can get for each dollar or how much the prices are changing. Um, and so, yeah, it's kept track of by the Bureau of Labor Statistics, which uh, has volunteers that keep track, that keep close track of exactly everything they buy and how much everything they buy costs. Uh, then they report it back, it's calculated into an index, and that reflects how much, the, essentially the purchasing power of each dollar. Um, and so, the C, so what does the CPI affect in terms of the financial markets? Why is it something we should care about it? Well, if you think about buying a bond, that bond gives you a fixed amount of income for a certain amount of time. Changes in the CPI directly affect how much you can actually buy with that money, and therefore directly affect the actual value of the bond. Therefore, the <coughs> excuse me, this type of fixed income is directly affected by the CPI. So a higher CPI uh, inversely causes bonds to be valued at less um, and changes the markets uh, as a result of that. So for example, um, after the release of the December 2017 CPI, uh, the US Treasury shed about 1.5% of their value, um, and a $1 million Treasury portfolio would have lost about 15K in just a few hours. And that's only in the direct effects. There are other effects as well. Um, and as of this recording in January uh, 2018, sorry, early February 2018, we've just seen a massive sell-off in the stock market uh, triggered as a result of higher than expected uh, inflation measured by the CPI. Um, okay, so there's a lot of data out there made uh, readily available by government agencies, especially the FRED, um, and those economic indicators are very uh, insightful as to what's going on in the current economy. Um, so how can we predict the CPI using that? Well, for any given month, we have a number of indicators that are available, um, including how much people are spending, the price of oil, the producer price index, um, and what we can do is take all those uh, values, plug them into a machine learning algorithm, uh, and then use that to predict next month's consumer price index. Uh, so basically, based on the current market conditions, can a machine learning algorithm then predict the consumer price index based on that? Um, okay, and so different um, prediction algorithms actually turned out to have different strengths and weaknesses. Uh, in overall average error, nothing could beat a uh, good old-fashioned linear regression, uh, which actually had very low error. Um, however, it did have a maximum error of 0.8%, which uh, <coughs> could be really bad for um, a particular portfolio and a neural network, while it had a larger average error, was doing better in terms of those um, particular outliers. Uh, okay, so um, if you'd like to follow this more, my blog runs a continuous prediction of what the next month to be released CPI will be. It's currently predicting the January 2018 CPI, uh, which should be released in about a week. Um, it'll be interesting to see how it does, and you can also download my code that generated this from GitHub. Uh, if you're interested in doing that. So my name is Nick Schmont. Um, I have a lot of hobbies, including scuba diving, flying, uh, robotics, and travel. Uh, thank you very much for your time.